Good morning and welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education uh, emergency meeting. This is Thursday, May 8th, 2014. May I please have the attendance? Mrs. Zeely? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Ling? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Murray? And Ms. Agar? Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and this morning we have a very short business agenda. This would be new business uh, resulting from last evening's town council meeting, and that would be 3.1. Uh, the fiscal year 2015 school budget amendment in response to the town council's adopted municipal fiscal year 2015 budget. Do I have a explanation from Dr. Entwistle? Sure. Um, I think your, your business today is basically to um, provide instruction to us in central office, primarily Kate and I, um, in terms of uh, making the reduction that was um, basically ordered by the council uh, last night, and it's a reduction of $587,000. Um, if you take a look at the sheet that's in front of you here, Kate has run a couple of scenarios uh, that you might look at. Um, I can tell you that the difference really is in terms of how much um, undesignated um, uh, revenue, unde um, um, undesignated surplus, you choose to use as revenue, okay? In, in Mr. Chiazzo's um, scenario that he laid out last night, he was proposing $200,000. Uh, um, Kate also ran one just to give you a sense of every time we uh, move that um, undesignated surplus number up or down, we also then correspondingly and reversely have to move the, um, uh, the uh, investments and restorations up or down. So I'll just run you through scenario A, which has um, an increase um, uh, in, in using as revenue uh, an additional $150,000. Um, essentially, then um, the base expenditures are really um, a re-estimation of the savings uh, to be uh, realized through the, the um, uh, contractual change on the benefit structure um, of additional $100,000 of savings. Um, across the board reduction in supplies and materials of approximately of, of $100,000. And um, to level fund the school nutrition uh, program rather than to make the what you were carrying as a responsible adjustment um, to cover uh, what has historically been a deficit there. If you were to run that scenario, you end up with um, $182,000 that need to be um, found in terms of reductions um, from your approved $736,750 of investments in restorations. In scenario B, um, many of the elements stay the same. You, what you'll see is the allocation of undesignated surplus gets increased to 200000 The um, $100,000 uh, across the board in supplies and materials is there. The um, increased estimate in terms of teacher uh, benefits structural changes is there. The $55,000 is there, although Kate has kind of um, tried to trick us by moving it a little bit. And, um, and, and, a con and correspondingly, again, so essentially, what I just ran through, <laughs> um, she, she slept here last night, and I think uh, she didn't get up early enough to do this. But, um, <clears throat> so essentially, the, the, the center part of the change in base expenditure budget adjustments remains the same, and then you see the corresponding $50,000 dollar adjustment to what we would have to find in investments and restorations. I would say to you that scenario B um, more so mirrors what Mr. Um, Chiazzo presented last night as the as basically his prediction of the scenario that would happen uh, were, to, were there to be a cut. Um, 
I think that Kate has provided on the second page um, a sense of what's happening with undesignated school surplus, and she has um, she has run uh, a couple of um, a couple of numbers f for you. Uh, she's run here. I think this scenario, basically, Kate, and correct me um, if I'm wrong, but the bottom line here projects uh, the scenario B that I just ran, which is the $200,000 of additional revenue that's coming from undesignated surplus. It gives you a sense of the kind of balance that you're working with. <coughs> Right. So, um, so essentially, the 374,987 is the projection. If you do the 200, if you do 150, it's 424,987. And you can also know that were you to think about doing something additional in terms of surplus, um, that 374,987 uh, number would be adjusted downward accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. There's a you seat have no for mic, you, I but think. You could sit right at the end, Kate. Kate. Can I no, you could sit right there. I don't really need to stay. I only wanted to make one comment, which is that $300,000 of that surplus is a guess. It's what we hope to achieve at the end of this fiscal year. So it's not in the bank at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good guess, um, and I feel comfortable with it. But uh, I do want the public to know that that money is not in the bank just at the moment. That's what we anticipate having left from our expenditures over revenues for fiscal year 2014, which we're currently finishing up. So um, I think that what we are really looking at is, is um, from your, the items that you approved on 5.1, we're now looking to amend the budget <coughs> further. And um, the piece that we really need to look at is um, getting a, a, new, a new budget total, basically, um, after you decide how you wish to adjust base expenditures investments and program restorations, budget adjustments, um, and debt service will re remain the same. So you're really looking at those three pieces. Mm. Kate, do you have, um, let me just make sure that I'm looking at the right thing here. So, so essentially, um, the action item that you did to move the, um, uh, and make a, an amendment in terms of the budget expenditures um, would be adjusted by whatever you decide to do in terms of base expenditures, investments and in program restorations and budget adjustments. Um, we would look at and then amend the budget revenues on the basis of what you would designate from your undesignated surplus. And we can, I know that Kate can quickly calculate those numbers um, uh, as you land on where you wish to be. This has CIP and um, I suppose there would be as well, Kate, a, um, a school nutrition amendment uh, depending on what we do in terms of funding there. the responsible adjustment that we were going to make. And I have those numbers here if you need them. Join us and yeah, please just flip over Jackie's name so that. So you're not impersonating yes. Ms. Perry. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. So 
those are shoes I'm not yet equipped to fill. <laughs> Sorry. Um, when we approved the school nutrition budget, we did have at that point a, a general fund contribution of 130000 So we would be taking that down as well. Right. Um, and the way that we worded it the last time was to offset that with um, changes in the other revenue sources so that, it, again, the budget appears as a net zero um, bottom line. So with that explanation, um, Christine, you may wish to start a discussion. The school board um, conducts their business a little less formally than the uh, town council, but you may wish to discuss or start the discussion with a motion to reduce um, by order of the town council um, the school budget by $587,000. Okay. And then you can um, maybe get into some of the other pieces. So move. Second. Um. All right. Discussion, comments? I'll start down at that end with Chris. Then. I'll keep my personal comments to myself because they're probably derogatory and negative. But um, uh, of the two scenarios looking at, I think scenario B is more in line with what we talked about last night. <coughs> um, what was laid out in front of the council <coughs> last night, I think it's important for them to understand <coughs> the impacts of the decisions that they make. I think it's important for us to maintain as much of that um, explanation as possible. Um, I do have some questions on scenario B of the Leadership Council revisited proposals. I know we're not going to get into the weeds of what we're keeping and what we're not keeping. Um, I would be remiss if I said I would have a difficult time supporting any budget that did not reinstate the art, music, and PE uh, uh, teachers. So uh, while I'm not asking for a firm commitment, uh, I think it is with, I will, I can, I can accept this with the understanding that we are going to do everything possible to preserve those positions. Secondly, on the designated fund balance, uh, our undesignated school surplus, excuse me. Um, Kate, if I'm, if I'm doing my math quickly and accurately, it's looking like we're going to be pulling a total of 925000 out of the undesignated surplus. So it's, is that correct? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. We started with... Actually, we are at 600000 right now. Mm -hmm. So in this pr proposal, we would either be doing 750000 or 800000 Okay, so the line, so we would not, uh, the way I'm looking in the second sheet, we have 125 for school nutrition deficit, 600 already, and 200 additional. So we would forego the 125, or we would do either 125 or 200. Is that correct? Um, the 125 is what I would like to leave behind in undesignated surplus to ensure that we have sufficient funds to cover school nutrition. So therefore, what I'm suggesting is that that's not really available to us. <coughs> There's going to be a cost out there okay. we're going to need that funding for. So I'm, I'm kind of taking the 125 out of the pot, and then what remains for us to play with is the 600 plus. Uh, whatever you decide to work with today. Okay. And then the projected balance, uh, balance at the bottom is depending on whether we choose 200 or, or 150. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, having said that, um, I would support pulling as much out of the undesignated surplus as we are somewhat less than comfortable doing. Um, I think if it's a difficult choice, it's probably the right one. If it were an easy choice, I would hope we've already made that decision. Um, so uh, rather than stop the momentum of, of moving forward with everything we've been doing for the past several years, uh, I would say we take the, the um, more risky step of tapping into undesignated surplus. So I would support scenario B, um, which is 800000 out of the surplus to revenue side and the reductions as listed with the understanding that we will do everything within our power to try and preserve those PE, art, and music positions. Just to, just to respond to that, Chris, um, I, uh, <coughs> the, the big focus for the entire team is the middle school right now and the changes that are happening there and ensuring that our organizational change can happen and, and the restorations are absolutely essential. Like they're, That's why they're, everything that's on this list is essential. And then we get to another level of 
really, really essential. Um, so the really, really essential is the middle school. Um, I would say to you that with that, with the this either one of these scenarios, um, there will not, there will, there will be um, a restoration of PE art and music at the middle school, we would not be able to make those corresponding changes. We may be able to make one of the changes to either art or music at the high school, but we will not be able to do both. I ju I, I'm ju and that's just my quick math, uh, but I don't think we will be able to do, do, do both. Understood. Thank you. Anybody? Donna. Sorry, um, I was being thoughtful for a moment and thinking about and are you thinking that the remainder stays the same as listed in this? No. Not necessarily. No, no, no absolutely not necessarily. Okay. There's another 50 some odd thousand dollars, right? The, yeah, there's. Well, after the 30, if you took out 39, there'd still be another 20 or so. Yeah, I w here's, here's what I would say. I would say that um, uh, each of the phases has certain critical elements. Um, they are represented on this sheet. Mm -hmm. The absolute most critical elements are the things that we will be able to um, pull together. Um, the rest will go off the sheet to, um, to accommodate the reduction in. So it's um, the additional $50,000 that would be when you look at um, the Leadership Council revisits proposal. I'm, I'm not following your question. Well, when you look at scenario B versus A. Yes. Under leadership council, under reduced investments. 132 of 132,000. Right. Yes, 132,000 will come out of this. Right. Um, it will, and we will do that across across the district based on school and district <coughs> priorities. So, um, not everything will, obviously, not everything will stay because I, we have to find 132,000 dollars there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And under uh, impacts. Um, no, it's, it's under base expenditures across the board, reduce the flies. That's going to remain the same, affecting the Correct. classrooms. Yep. <clears throat> we look at an impact with nutrition. Correct. And then the 50000 more that <coughs> is, is under the revenue that will come under undesignated funds. In scenario number, in C scenario B, yes. Correct. Chris? Um, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, Donna, are you nope, finished? That's okay. Yep. For now. For now, <coughs> said. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, Kate, if I could get some clarification on the, um, uh, where is it, uh, supplies and materials line. I assume that's an ongoing budget line, meaning we don't just say we purchase $100,000 worth of materials at the beginning of the year and call it good. Is that an ongoing rolling kind of fund type of thing? Um, well, we do budget specifically each year in each building and department and sometimes quite specifically as to the, the function of those things, um, but we don't purchase everything on day one. It is a bit more front-loaded than some of the other expense accounts because you do try to bring in as much as you can for the start of the school year. So from July to <coughs> September 1st, there's a lot of spending in those areas. Um, what I think the superintendent is proposing is that we go back through all of those individual lines and see if there are places where we can trim so that we wouldn't necessarily be hitting one particular phase or department heavily, um, but we would be pulling back a little bit um, in each one. But I guess my, to my, my, where I was trying to go with that was if we find ourselves in a favorable position later on in the year, with another fund, let's say, if we've got a, a better benefits return or something like that, we could always supplement that fund if necessary. We don't, we're not locked in, that, that's fixed, frozen, and then we're done for the year. Uh, no, that's a very good point. Uh, we can always authorize budget transfers if we were to there. achieve savings in another area, um, depending on the, the size of the transfer and the, and the category, the voter budget category that it comes into or out of. There might need to be some actual board action, or it might be a little bit more informal than that. But we do have the ability to move that. Okay. Thank you. Jody? I just um, want to agree with Chris on what he has said in that, one, I'm, I'm disappointed that we're sitting here this morning and having to look at a, a, a very responsible budget and make 
drastic cuts. And secondly, the fact that there were so few people out last night in support of this budget that we proposed is, is frustrating, and I think um, the public needs to educate themselves on what this budget entails. And the fact that is, is that now it will um, have a lot less than what we actually need. And I don't think people realize that until it, it hits them personally, and by then it's too late. So I, too, would um, agree that option B, scenario B, is, is the way we need to go <coughs> this morning. I, I hate that we're in this position, and I think um, things need to change drastically over the next year. Can we? Um, I think it's obvious that we are all um, disappointed to be here today. Um, I'm concerned about a reduction in supplies and materials. We have heard <coughs> for several years that we have outdated textbooks, we have outdated learning materials, and if we're now just going to make a $100,000 cut to that, um, we're certainly moving in the wrong direction. It's going to take us longer and cost more to get back to where we should be right now. Um, and if I am correct in my assumption with this line item, that also includes pencils, crayons, markers, things that parents already are spending hundreds of dollars at the start of the school year to pay for. There still are teachers that every year start the school year hundreds of dollars that they're spending out of their own pockets for these materials because even though parents send stuff in the start of the year, by the end of the year, they're still, they're running out. The markers are dried up, the crayons are broken. Um, it's pathetic. It really is. The situation when you have go to an open house and teachers are essentially begging for tissues because that's not supplied and parents have to provide that. It's ridiculous. It really is. Um, so I'm concerned about $100,000 coming out of that already very slim budget line um, that doesn't even cover basic needs for learning in the classroom. I don't think there's a better place for it to come from, but I just, like Jody said, people really have to educate themselves about what is in this budget and what is not. The detractors we hear over and over again latch on to these items that are not in this budget. They're not even under consideration or have already been paid for by a different voter referendum years ago. That's a separate budget altogether. Um, and so that, that concerns me because we already have upwards of, and Donna can back me up on this, about 80 kids who at the start of the school year, Project Grace provides um, through donations back to school supplies. That number just jumped because there's going to be even more things that are going to have to get added to the back-to-school supplies list that families are going to be responsible for buying. So, hello, add a tax. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So, it's horribly disappointing, the whole thing, every year, budget season. It seems to be getting worse every year. So, um, I really, really hope that this is the end of it and people pay attention and come and vote on Tuesday because if we have to cut more, I... I'm not even sure how I'm going to respond to that, <laughs> but it won't be good. <laughs> Donna, do you want to go first? Oh. So, um, well, I share, too, you know, the concern, particularly that we didn't have much of a turnout last night. I mean, the room was about two-thirds full after people left. Um, and we started the discussion on education. Um, so I'm, I'm disappointed with that. I am concerned that we are asked to make this amount of a cut. However, I feel that we did make some good progress this year. The two finance councils speaking with each other and seeming, appearing to come to a new understanding and making some movement in the right direction. Um, you know, I'm glad I don't sit on that, on that council because it's, it's difficult to be given a whole bunch of numbers in front of you and try to figure, figure it out. If you're not an educator, it's hard to look 
at these documents and figure it out real quickly. And we're, we're, you know, sometimes that's what happens. I, I would like to see us try to engage in those conversations somehow really early. And we said last a year ago that we were going to do it really early this year, and, and it doesn't seem to happen. So we need to maybe find those dates in September that occur in the fall to in, just initially start some of the conversations or answer some questions about how budgets and how things go. Um, so um, while I am disappointed to have to you know, look to the classrooms and uh, look to these lines to, to find places where we can deduct it, I, I feel that the progress we've made um, is a good one. And I would really hope that the community comes out and recognizes the need to support education by next Tuesday, because that's the vote. And it's a really short amount of time from now till then. And so people need to get involved, and they need to come out and vote. And they, I, I'm really hopeful that they'll support our schools. So I, I worry about that in this town, because we have a culture that isn't necessarily what we would like it to be at all in terms of education, but we do have 80% of the people who don't have children in the schools. So that, that's a huge impact, and you know, I think we've gained some good momentum and some good movement with the town council, as demonstrated last night. James? I am disappointed uh, sitting here just as everybody else, and um, I agree with everything everybody, you know, almost everything everybody has said. I did not the exact, I will point later. Um, just look at the proposal. I definitely strongly support that putting the $200,000 from surplus to alleviate the situation here and problem here. And I do agree with Chris that we need to, again, I know Georgia has assured us the classroom needs the middle school, the arts, and the, you, know, you will accommodate as much as you can. And also what um, Kelly, I, uh, I share the same opinion with Kelly about the $100,000 in supplies and the materials because looking at the budget, those lines <coughs> are very small percentage of our budget. So having that cut us $100,000 it's a, going to have a huge impact. So I urge the leadership to look other places. I know it's hard, but those things actually go directly affect the, the children. And so, um, you know, I heard hope that doesn't, you know, uh, have, happen. And uh, another thing um, I think I want to mention is, uh, um, I, you know, I, Donna says, you know, we have been moving the uh, right direction with the town council, and uh, we all were there yesterday, and I kind of feel, actually, I very much appreciate what they're doing, majority of the town council doing. We know everybody has different opinions, and, uh, but I do think the councilors did come with a spirit compromise and good faith, and it was, you know, did the do their job to support us, and uh, I know it's not what we want, and I guess not what I want either, but um, I do <coughs> think uh, I want to recognize the efforts they have made that to, to get us here, so otherwise we probably in a worse situation, you know. So, and um, that's what I, you know, so when we go in forward and looking at the detail, I hope that just, um, I know we don't as a board to kind of go into the details, but we really hope to sit, you know, the direction, you know, I hope everybody agree with, you know, let's not cut the supplies and let's try to get the kids <coughs> more money into the classroom and ten more money in the classroom and try to cut some of the Thank you. Anybody else? Chris. Uh, I, I know we're running out of time, and I'll keep it short. I, I would concur with Donna and, and Jane and everybody here. Um, uh, obviously, it was a very frustrating experience last night, especially as uh, personally to me after spending the amount of time that, that, that I did and the Finance Committee did 
doing what we thought was the right thing, um, and I still stand by that, that it is the right thing and it was the right thing. Um, I was very sincere when I said arbitrary unilateral cuts are not productive, um, but I would concur that, um, you know, I, I, I really mulled this over last night. Um, the fight or flight reflex has to kick in now, and um, I think we've, we've gained some grounds. I think we've made some positive improvement this year. It's not as much as I would like. Um, I would have liked to have taken bigger steps and covered more ground, but at least we're still moving forward. And I, I think as a board we can, we can be very proud of the fact that in the environment that we're in in this town, with the councils that we have and had in the past, that we've been able to maintain momentum. And while this doesn't give us everything we want or even everything we need, it does keep the progress moving, and that's the critical point. And that's what I had to walk away with last night. Of I didn't get everything I wanted. I didn't even get most of what I wanted, but I got the most important thing. We got the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the, um, the progress that we make with the council um, is, is, is positive. I hope that continues. I, I have every belief that it will continue. It's always imperative of this board to mobilize our base. And we've got a lot of work to do. We recognize that last year. We continue to recognize that. Um, it is the, our responsibility to help try and get that word out and motivate these people. Um, and I think that's something we continue to focus on outside of the budget season. I think we, we put it off until it get, comes to critical mass. But to, to Donna's point, I think we, we really do almost need to start this process, as much as we hate to admit it, um, September 1 when we come back for the next year. We start our outreach, we start our budget development, we start talking to counselors, we start <coughs> building that groundswell on multiple facets. It's not one area in particular. So disappointing, yes. Catastrophic, no. <coughs> Progress, sure, I, I, I think so. Um, and so I, I, I would support scenario B and I, I would hope that um, we could get this community support and again, I, I, you, everybody on this board has heard me say, hope and faith are no means of a good strategy. But unfortunately, that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. We have to have hope and faith that the town will support our efforts. Donna? Um, just one point that I, that I do want to bring up is that I think we need to resolve the issue that's in the public regarding the furniture. <clears throat> and that certainly is an issue as we look at the budget sits here. <clears throat> uh, we want to make clear to people what's going on with the furniture. Um, Mrs. Sizemore, do you want to do you want to speak to that, or do you want me to go ahead? Um, I can do that now, or give you a report. Um, just we know, so just do, do it now for everyone else. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of um, furniture and. Uh, equipment in the building that is being reused. Um, all the office furniture in all the offices is being repurposed over to the new building, along with some other offices in the district that do not have uh, desks that are um, um, correct. The, um, all the light bulbs in the building, in the gym, in the cafeteria are being taken out to be reused. Um, they can be used as replacements in our other facilities. Um, all of the carts that they have equipment on are being reused in the new building. Um, there are, the middle school does not have any more chairs left. Uh, they're out completely, and uh, we're repurposing chairs over to the middle school to use them for the kids. Uh, several tables are going to different uh, elementary schools um, and to um, the high school and to the middle school to help with their um, reorganization. Uh, some of the, th there is a donation to the Partners of World Health that has been done, and the furniture that they came in and are taking are uh, bookcases that we no longer have use for. Um, there are um, some tables and that have been there for a while and um, a few chairs, but a lot of the chairs have uh, been reused. There are teacher chairs there that are, some of them are over 20 something years old that are very wobbly um, and sometimes very un unsafe. So they are not being used. Um, they are not even being taken by Partners for World Health. 
Um, so that's what's happening with the furniture. There is wiring that's being taken out and being reused. There's lighting fixtures. There are, but when you do a demolition, the uh, contractor who um, bids on the demolition is entitled to everything that is tacked into the building. So like the windows that are there, because they're tacked onto the build, they're part of the building, the uh, contractor has the right to them, to, re to refurbish them. We do not. We can take the contents that are in there. And what we did was, because of the lights and so forth, we put that in the contract that we, of the stuff that we wanted to take out. Mm -hmm. So they knew up front when they were bidding what, they were ha what we were planning on reusing. There is a lot of reusing happening at the, um, out of Wentworth to the new school. And the World Health Organization, did they uh, seek out, do they regularly seek out other school systems uh, who are undergoing uh, new buildings or? Yes, and um, we did get rejected from another school district on the furniture. They um, did not want our used furniture. They, so we did put a call out and <coughs> many school districts said no thank you. And there were, actually would have been a cost to dispose of it. Yes, cost to dispose of it. Yeah. My understanding is that Partners for World Health will come in, package it up, take it out of their own volition. That is and correct. And it's not our responsibility to have to no cost undertake to no that. Cost. No, world country. There is no cost to us as a school district or as the town of Scarborough municipality to do that. So Partners for World Health has their organization. They have their group of volunteers, et cetera, employees and things like that. They come in, they take it all, they package it up, and they ship it off. They also do that with medical supplies and many other um, items that are outdated, uh, medical supplies that are outdated that the hospitals just toss into the bins. They come, pick it up, and even though it's outdated, they, they can use it there in a third world country. So to just say that you're tossing it and getting rid of it is really no. a shame as well. So, so um, these kinds of conversations are those things that should be resolved in advance of going into the final stages of our deliberations on, in the springtime on the budget. Because otherwise we end up with conversations or we hear statements that are untrue um, from both the community and the town council members, and it, it just does nothing but negative stuff to our whole community. And accuracy is really important, so I'm hopeful that those kind of things could be we, taken care of in advance. We, we did, um, when Chris and Dr. Entwistle and I sat down with Tom Hall and Jessica Holbrook and Richard Sullivan, we did say, you know, if you or any other counselor or town manager, whoever, has a question, come to them along the way that they don't have the answer for, feel free to contact us and we'd be happy to give you the information because that's part of the problem. Nobody asks until it comes to the budget time and they hear that we need money. And then suddenly it's, oh, well, we heard you were, you know, getting rid of perfectly good furniture. Well, if they'd like to come in and see this perfectly good furniture that we're donating, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure Mrs. Sizemore could uh, mm -hmm. show them, show them what, it what that is. So, Chris? Yeah, I think to, to respond to Donna's point about the, about the um, trying to take as much off the table ahead of time as we can, I, you know, I, it never ceases to amaze me the, uh, the issues that come up out of, that seemingly out of the blue that we've either already addressed several times in public meetings, including the furniture, mm -hmm. or um, through various uh, outsourcing <laughs> websites or other types of media. Um, I think um, while I think we'll never be able to avoid that entirely just because of the nature of the business that we do in public, um, I do think that um, it, it behooves us to, as a board and as a council, look at better ways to try and communicate as much as possible with the community uh, as early as possible, not necessarily to give them the opportunity to influence the process, but at least to inform them of where we are and what our intentions are so that when the opportunity does come up for them to have input and have say, they can be educated, they can be informed so that we don't spend our time talking about issues that aren't relevant and we could focus on solving the problems that we have. All right, so that being said, I'll put my last two cents in since I do have the, oh, somebody else. Yeah, I just wanted to say one thing about communication. 
We all have email addresses and phone numbers posted on the school website. We had, I think, <coughs> one person email us in this whole budget season, and she was flooded with responses. We write back. We answer questions. No one's asking us. Um, we're doing all we can through our public meetings to get information out there. We have our own Facebook page. Please come to us for accurate information. We would love to share it with you. Um, in addition to our regular meetings and our minutes and agendas and anything else. It's not a secret, the stuff we've been talking about all year long. Please, put in a little bit of effort and come to us and we'll tell you what is fact and what is fiction. Um, we're doing the best we can to get our message out and um, it seems primarily that it's the inaccuracies are the things that are information that people are latching onto and that spread like wildfire. I wish the true stuff would spread just as fast. So, thank Good you. point, good point, thank you. So since I do have the last word and we're approaching that moment of where everybody needs to get moving with their kids, um, I would say that I echo the sentiments of my fellow board members. Um, we worked well with the council, however, we didn't you know, achieve all of our goals that we had put down and um, it's unfortunate that we need to turn back to the leadership council and ask them to make some more adjustments, but this is the issue and the fact that we're faced with. So that being said, I would ask for... I think between Kate and I, we can give you the, the specifics um, of where you've landed. Um, basically, your motion is um, to reduce the budget that you adopted by $587,000 and specifically a reduction in non-property tax revenue right here. Right. Um, Kate, Kate has laid out the um, 587 here, the total change in expenditures which are uh, both uh, in terms of uh, our base expenditures, investments and program restorations, and responsible adjustments to the budget amounts to $387,000, and you are adding as revenue um, the undesignated surplus in the amount of $200,000. Okay, so we did have a um, motion. Yeah. We had the motion. Motion, so <coughs> we move the motion. Okay. All in favor of approval as presented. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oops, Not a Jane. Jane. Question. I just want before we, we go vote, uh, mm -hmm. um, I want to be clear, you know, we are voting on just the total sum instead of as proposed in Schedule B. So, you know, the details of base expenditure is not going to be what we are proving. It's just the total 587 sum. So just want to make sure that what's being voted on. My understanding is that it's coming out of these areas. That 587 is, yes, the total number that we're looking to reduce <coughs> our budget by. 200 will come from the undesignated surplus. 100,000 will come from across the board reduction in supplies and materials. 55,000 will come from the school nutrition. 100 will come from the uh, increase in our estimated savings on our teacher benefits. Um, and then the 132 will come from that list. I have to. So, right? I think did yeah, I miss if, if I can clarify just a bit, um, to go to Chris's point earlier, we do need to place these changes someplace in the detailed budget so that we can go out to the voters and say, here are the areas that we are budgeting for. Uh, that needs to happen now, but the board does have the authority and, and the leadership can bring it to them to change those within the budget <coughs> once it is passed. So I think we can sort of answer both questions, yes. One is that we are correct, we are voting to place our expenses in a specific area today, mm -hmm. and yes, we also may change that as we go forward. Did you want to, okay. so are you okay with that? <coughs> I just want to, to, to on the record, you know, if that's it, 
That's not what I, you know, I would like to support um, that. I, I think it looks like the board is going to, you know, pass this, you know, resolution and, um, you know, I, I can't, I think it's probably the best, even though I think I have two choices, one is supported and one is not, which I would like to, I guess, say, you know, since it's going to pass, I will be voting against it because I want to make sure, you know, these details are being considered, you know, as in, uh, going forward and on record, this is not really everybody on the board who is going to support reducing these particular items, you know, from the, so uh, I, I just want to make sure, you know, that everybody, before I vote, everybody understands. If that's the case, this is a detailed pro uh, proposed that's being passed, I would, you know, I would not be able to support. Okay, and you are entitled to your vote. So all in favor of approval as presented with the scenario B with the total reduction of $587,000. There's five. Um, opposed? One. So moved. What's our next? We have one more. Go I, for it. We're done, Is we? that it? Um, Kate, oh, do, no, we, do we need to? Um, Jody needs to leave. to leave. Thank you, Jody, for Jody. coming. Do we, we need to make a specific um, uh, adjustment to the school nutrition budget? Um, I would suggest that we should do so, yes, and say that in the school nutrition budget we are moving to reduce From general fund support by $55,000 and to reallocate other revenues to cover that loss. I've got the old motion in front of me from the original. I can just re rewrite that to say a reduction of, of 55000 Yep. All right, reduce. That'd be perfect. With the, uh, would you say with the, with the difference to be made up with other revenue or what? Um, uh, yeah, it's I, I've got, I've got adjust other revenues to offset. I think that adjust other revenues to okay. offset, I think All that's right. what we said the first time. So, um, and I, I, I reserve the right to amend this if it's not worded properly. <laughs> <laughs> so I will make a motion to amend the fiscal year 2015 school nutrition budget um, to reduce um, the, uh, decrease the general fund appropriation from 130,000 to 80, uh, 75, uh, sorry, 75,000 and adjust other fund revenues to offset. All right. Discussion? Chris? Ridiculous. <laughs> I <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I absolutely echo your sentiments to know that this is underfunded and we can't make the responsible adjustment to make this right. So but it's $55,000 more invested in... in and that's, uh, and that's the, why I'm willing to say yes. The high so. priority <laughs> program needs. Absolutely. Okay. Anybody else? All in favor of approval as presented with the school nutrition budget. We have five. Uh, so moved. Anything else? Uh, just an adjournment, I think. Okay. Do I have a motion, the will of the board right now? Can you adjourn? Um, yeah. yeah. All right. I've got a move to, I've got a second. All in favor of adjourning? Five. I'd like to thank everybody very much for attending. Are you second that? Yeah, 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 sure. I don't know. Whatever you think. Whatever you think. Whatever you think. Oh, she's been looking for it. I just got her outfit all picked up. I do. I do.